my case 22 year old gentleman with no non comorbidities who is a non smoker presented with complaints of recurrent swelling of approximately 2 cross 1 cm in the left parotid region which rapidly progressed to a current size of 6 cross 5 cm in the last 6 months with no history of ear discharge with no history of awareness of lump anywhere in the body or no history suggestive of distal metastasis with history suggestive of facial nerve palsy uh, status post past history of two his, uh, two surgeries in the left parotid region one was in 2019 uh, wherein patient had a swelling of 2 cross 1 cm over the span of one and a half years and the other surgery was performed in 2021 where the patient had a swelling of 3 cross 2 cm over the span of 6 months <coughs> examination it's a recurrent parotid swelling it's a recurrent parotid swelling we only operate we done total conservative parotidectomy last time. In three years, he stopped the recurrence. So, we are looking at this case now. The patient was examined in a sitting position in a valid room after taking due consent of the patient. Examination of the head and neck. Oops. On inspection, uh, the facial symmetry is not maintained. The right angle of the right on the right side, the angle, the mouth is elevated towards the right side. On inspection, uh, on inspection, a visible uh, swelling of approximately six cross five centimeter is seen in the left parotid region with uh, raised left ear lobule. On inspection, uh, there is a visible scar of uh, modified Blair incision scar was seen. Um, in the left parotid region, uh, which probably healed with a secondary intention. Uh, on examination, on uh, asking the patient, so mouth opening was adequate. The dental hygiene was well maintained. There was a uh, visible fullness in the uh, between the two partial pillars. Uh, Sir, there is a swelling in the parotid region. It's a recurrent parotid. Yes. How do you, what do you find on palpation? Tell us the findings. Sir, on, on palpation, there was a, uh, uh, there is a 5 cross 6 centimeter firm to hard lump is palpable in the left parotid region with well-defined margins and lobulated surface. And uh, on oral examination, there was also a visible lumpiness is uh, seen in the, between the two fossil pillars. However, the palpation of deep lobe was not possible due to the presence of gag reflex. And uh, on examination, the uh, facial nerve palsy was present and there was no uh, cervical lymphadenopathy on examination and spinal uh, tenderness was spinal. Very, nice. Very good presence. Give a round of applause. Give a round of applause. Sir, I examined the back second maxillary uh, Mole, uh, second maxillary molar, but I couldn't able to see the parotid duct. That, that, that parotid duct. There, the opening is seen. Yes. Where do you palpate the duct? The parotid uh, duct is palpable at the anterior border of the masseter muscle after asking the patient to clinch the uh, mouth. And we divide it into the three regions and three uh, equal divide regions and upper one third and uh, lower two third. It is uh, visible at the, it is palpable at the anterior border. That's right. Um, uh, no. What else? Swelling is hard. Hard, sir. And it's not lobulated. The surface is regular. Sur surface is irregular. It is fixed to the masseter or not? It is fixed, sir. How would you know that? Sir, I asked the patient to clinch the. But it is fixed to begin with. Eh? It is fixed to begin with. You can't test for that masseter fixity test. No? Yeah. Yes. And what else? You heard about the. Fascia test also, the way you make the muscle taut, it becomes, uh, if it is mobile and those features we already discussed, we're not going there. Anything else you found? The facial nerve palsy. Was um, on asking the patient to raise his. Fix the head. No, you can fix it one finger also. So, on asking the patient to uh, raise his eyebrows, the, there is absence. Glasses also. 
one side and no ring to stop, yes. right? Yes. Then yes. on asking the patient to close his eyes, ask him to see Door se bandh kisi? There's a slight difference. Slight difference is there. Then the 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 ramus ventricularis that is the angle. Yes. अच्छे से स्माइल कीजिए। उन्होंने कहा अच्छे से स्माइल कीजिए। ऐसे स्माइल करता है। हाँ ऐसे। What do you see? So there is a deviation. There is a difference in the. Ask him to show his teeth. That's better. अपने दांत में तो नहीं। Smile. You're right. Any any diagnosis you give us now? Sir, uh, it's a case of uh, recurrent uh, parotid swelling likely to be a age when he was twenty. Uh, sir, first when he was okay. he was uh, nineteen years of age. So what's the what's the commonest tumor in children? Parotid uh, tumor in children. New problem. New problem. Give us a diagnosis, no? Me, sir. It's a case of recurrent mucoid epidermoid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you say. <laughs> What's your name? Ankit Agarwal. From where? Sir, from uh, Chand P J Chandigarh. P J Chandigarh. Okay. So you can just tell us it is a malignancy. Mucoid epidermoid. You'll have to go inside yes. and see, no? But you're right. Your examination findings are all very good. You can very the easily. Question asks is what are the causes of recurrence? It is lobulated, uh, Doctor. This is it's a big swelling and it is lobulated. It has irregular surface. It's hard and consistent. It's in mobile, and uh, if you turn the head to the other side. Can see the scar. A part of the fixity is also because it's post-operative. So you can't be commenting very, very strongly. And I'll be happy to look for nodes. Did you find any nodes? Yes, sir. So level two and level two lymph nodes. Are... Level two is palpable. Very correct. What else? What is the most common? Well, usually for parotid, they used to do you know posterior lateral dissection earlier. So level two, three. Four and five, you should look for five is also one node palpable. There is a node. Huh? Now the duct. Zor se daan dawa. Zor se shavash. This is the masseter. Bring your finger. Now, this is a taut masseter. Now, and roll it. You can very clearly feel it. Feel it? That's the duct. Here. Not bent? No, yes. So the duct is felt. By rolling against a taut masseter, and what he was saying was also right. Angle of the mouth to the ear lobule. This line you divide it in three parts. That's where you feel it. They're all palpating now. All of you have parotid duct. Very good. That's a great news. So the parotid duct is clearly palpable. This is hard inconsistency with areas of lobulation, and it is actually gone reserved now with the facial nerve involved. There is a level two node. Clearly palpable. Those who did not come last time can come now. And the visible scar is of modified Blair's incision. And the fact you don't see it is because I take it further backwards to make it completely invisible. Okay. Other ye dekhe koi problem to nahi. You observe something is getting that those twitches. Yes. But is it infiltrated by the malignancy? We have to sacrifice. So we still twitching now is still functioning. I mean, the, it is still all right. So if you free it from all around, we'll be able to get without preservation and yet. So we may not resort to radical parotidectomy. We can do total conservative parotidectomy, which means we'll remove the superficial and deep flow, but we'll preserve the facial nerve, or at least the main trunks of the facial nerve. Small branches can be sacrificed. And if we have to reconstruct, we we'll ask the options. Now, do you guys understand the importance of being physically present? Yes or no? Yes, sir. You can speak loudly so that it's heard. Yes, yes sir. sir. Virtual is virtual. With all good luck to virtual be watching you. Madam asked a very important question, and she raised a very important point about the twitching. So that's what we discussed.
Now, if you're planning to reset the segment of it, how do you reconstruct it? Who's going to answer that? Uh, you can uh, reconstruct it using the Sural graph. Cable graph or? You can shout. Greater auricular nerve. Or you can use greater auricular nerve, it should be there for preserved. But if you use the malignancy, sometimes it may be in a broad area. Sural nerve is a good option. Cable graft is one option. Otherwise, if you cannot do the nerve grafting, what can be done? You can use the slings, the temporalis slings. And this time, we will fill that space to prevent Frey syndrome. What are the complications of carotid surgery? Four apps. Sabya? Brace, facial arm, fluid. One more. Face chiller. Repeat. So, Fisina injury, face syndrome, and fistula. And fluid. That is your own. Okay. Yes. Good. So, reconstruction can be done using those structures. You should know about it this much. And this time, we discussed, I asked you one indication for benign condition where radiation is given. This is that benign condition. So we go for surgery, follow it up with radiation 100%. Otherwise, this patient is going to get like this. Clear? Any doubts? So, patient nerve injury can be managed by dynamic and we dynamic procedures. Dynamic would involve either the sling or the nerve repair procedures. And a dynamic would be like putting all those weights uh, on the top of the eyelid or. If there's facial and nerve involvement, to preserve the, the, the activity of the nerve, there's a system called TESS, Trophic Electrical Stimulation, that maintains the nutrition and the activity of the nerve till it can be reconstructed. Thank you very much. And we have one more presentation.